Hey everybody, it's Christopher Small, the unconventional attorney. Today, I wanna to talk to you about how to get your team to leave you alone. Uh, before I get to that though, I wanna remind you, as always, if you are a law firm owner and you are on the struggle bus, if you are uh, not where you wanna be, if you're going too slow, if you're not sure what to do next, if you're having trouble getting clients, if you just need a kick in the butt and you want to um, come to a place where you'll get some accountability, some support, some fun, you get to look under the hood of my firm, Go check out the um, OMA Accelerator at theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash OMA1, the number one, 147 a month. It's money well spent. Okay, how to get your team to leave you alone. So I, I uh, had, a, I had a, a, a first phone call with a new coaching client today. She's awesome, she's crushing it. Actually not a law firm owner, um, but doing crazy, crazy business and uh, she has a, a pretty big team and one of the problems that she's experiencing is a problem that uh, that that we've all experienced including myself is um, having the team uh, trying to do their best having the team working hard but having the team constantly asking you questions interrupting your day stopping in at all times and sort of just um, getting a lot of stuff done but also interrupting your ability to get stuff done okay this I would consider to be sort of a second level problem. Uh, the first level problem would just getting the phone to stop ringing. Hopefully you've already solved that. And uh, once that happens, once you get the phone to stop ringing in your office, you tend to get more business, you get more business, you meet some people, and then your people start interrupting you. And there are a couple of different solutions, a couple of different ways to solve this problem. I wanted to talk about some of them so that you could implement them in your business and begin to have more time to do more things, to get more business, to run more efficiently, to set your team up to, to win better, okay? So what I'll say is this, number one, the number one thing that I do is basically, um, okay, so all of this, by the way, really goes to like setting boundaries, to letting everyone know when you're available, how to talk to you, how to communicate with you, and how to do things in the right way. And you have to set these boundaries, and then you have to honor these boundaries, which means if people, uh, are not, um, if people are not responding to what you're doing, you're gonna have to be firm with them, okay? You have to tell them, remember, these are the rules. We are following these rules no matter what. Because the moment you set these rules and go back into your office, somebody is going to come in and, and interrupt you and challenge the rules. So step number one is to be firm with, with, the, <coughs> excuse me, with the rules that you set to make sure that they actually get followed, okay? One of the first things that I do that I implemented that works really well is is essentially um, letting people know that they are not at liberty to just come in and ask me a question whenever they want. What I try to get people to do is stack their questions and come ask me a bunch in a row. What I usually will do is right at the beginning of the day, do we have any questions? What's going on? How's the day looking? Do you have any problems that you foresee? Then like around noon, again, hey, what problems have you encountered so far? And then towards the end of the day, do we have anything that we need to talk about before we wrap up the day? They can hit me with as many questions as they want right there. Usually takes, <coughs> excuse me, usually takes 15 or 20 minutes. And um, instead of having five interruptions with five minor questions, it's one interruption with five questions. Everything gets taken care of. Everything gets done. You don't get interrupted. Okay, that's part number one. Now, part number two, the reason that it's only 15 minutes is because the way that I have people ask me questions and come to me with problems is a very specific way. And if you have not impl implemented this, then you will soon find that it's a, it's a legit game changer. What I try to do, or what I tell people, my people is, do not come to me with a question unless you already have a, a solution in mind that you can propose to me, right? So, so somebody comes and they say, well, this client wants to do X, Y, Z, what should we do? And I will say, what do you think we should do? I want them to have an answer ready. Not an answer that's like, oh, have Z, you know, like they just came up with something on the fly. I want them to actually think about what is the actual answer. That's how things go faster because your team often knows what the solution is. And either they are just a little hesitant to implement it without asking, or they want to make sure that they have your approval before they do it, or they just want to make sure that they haven't forgotten anything or missed some sort of critical component, and they want to make sure that they're doing the right thing. 
So a lot of times what they'll say is, I have this problem, this client wants to do X, or this thing happened, I think we should do X, Y, Z, and then a lot of times you're gonna say, that is wonderful, go and do X, Y, and Z. So that's that, that's number two. The number two thing that you do. Nobody comes to you with a problem without a proposed solution, okay? Thing number one is we stack our problems. And then thing number three, that is that is also very, very helpful, um, this happens after you get a couple of people on your team, is you wanna have a hierarchy of sort of, um, of accountability or a hierarchy of, of questions. So for me, I have an associate that works for me, I have a paralegal, I have a legal assistant. So the hierarchy basically goes, um, the legal assistant asks the paralegal first. If the paralegal knows, then the paralegal helps. If the paralegal doesn't know, then the legal assistant will ask the associate attorney. If the associate attorney doesn't know, then they will come to me. Okay, they will all, then they'll still all come to me at the beginning at that time. I'll get, we'll all get copied on email so they can see the answer so they know what to do the next time. Same with the paralegal. Paralegal has a question, associate attorney first. And if they don't have a, an answer, then they come to me. Associate attorney, same thing. They don't have anybody to go to. At this point in time, they come to me. At some point in time, they may have somebody else to go to, or they may be the person that, that is sort of the, at the top. Uh, but when you have this hierarchy of authority, basically, it just, it, it's really what it is, is, is an authority of expertise. Each person up the chain just knows a little bit more, has a little bit more experience, can answer these questions better. Then again, you don't have people coming to you with, with small problems. I had, um, for example, the conversation that I was having today, um, this person who's the, the CEO of this business, a bit, really big business, was getting asked like to approve referral uh, vouchers, you know, for like 50 bucks. And it's like, man, you know, that's that's time that someone else could 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 be taking uh, from you so that you can focus more on getting your business to run better, you know, helping your people out, just doing whatever things that do that are just like a little bit higher level. So if you find yourself struggling with time, if you have a team and they are, are um, doing a good job, but they are sort of um, relying on you to help them a lot, I would implement these three things and you will see both the productivity of your team increase, your productivity increase, uh, client service will increase, and everybody will be happier, rainbows will come out, you know, the skies will part, bluebirds will sing, it will be amazing all around, okay? So that's it. As usual, if you like this, <laughs> if you like this video or this audio, or whatever you're listening to, please uh, hit the like button. If you're someplace where you can leave a review and you are so inclined to do so, I would love one. If you are someplace you can subscribe, subscribe. You know, there's no there's no ads or anything here, anything like that. So um, your way to say thank you is to hit those little buttons and let me know that you're listening. And um, as always, if you are a law firm owner, or maybe you're a business owner, really, and you want to go faster, you're, you're struggling, you're not sure where to go, you want some help, some strategy, and you just want a support group. Part of, part of the best thing about the OMA Accelerator is the people that are in the group. It's only law firm owners, really. It's only business owners. They all understand exactly what you're going through. They understand your struggles. They understand how hard it is to, to win. And they are also, though, ready and willing to push you to do the things that you need to do to get to where you need to go. Okay, to check that out, go to theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash OMA1, the number one, OMA number one. Uh, it's 147 a month, no contracts. What do you got to lose, right? Go check it out. All right, that's it. As always, I am Christopher Small. I am the unconventional attorney. I'm the owner of CMS Law Firm. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Appreciate you, and I'll talk to you again.